Hi, in this video we're going to talk about complex numbers and it's just a quick review assuming that you've already been through complex numbers. So if you haven't, you might want to find something that's more thorough than just this. Okay, so complex numbers are of the form A plus BI. So BI is the imaginary part, A is the real part. And so all complex numbers will be of this form. In fact, all real numbers are of this form too, where B is equal to zero. So a real number is a complex number. Uh, if you look at this little Venn diagram here, what's included and what's not, these are all the real numbers down here. They're included in the set of all complex. The imaginary numbers are the ones that just have the I with them. And then if you are complex, then you're one plus something with I in it. And then these are algebraic ones, negative three plus minus two I and so on okay so these are the real numbers they are part of the set of the complex numbers where b is equal to zero you should know this setup and have seen this before now if we want to move on to some examples well first of all what is i when we look at what i is i is equal to the square root of negative one so if i look at this and i take i to the fifth well let's look at some patterns here first so if I have i squared, i squared is equal to negative 1. i cubed is equal to what? Negative i. i to the fourth, negative 1 times negative 1 gives me i, uh, I squared times i squared, which would just be 1. And if I keep on going on in this pattern, now it's just going to be 1 times i. So I'm back at i. So this in reduced form would be simply just i. And if you look, I have a pattern of 4. And so I'm going to go for a pattern of 4 again. So this would be negative 1. And then i to the 7th would be negative i. And i to the 8th would be 1. And so on. These are all groups of 4. So if you can figure out what the remainder is when you divide this exponent divided by 4, then you're going to be in business. So for instance, 29 divided by 4 is equal to... Uh, is equal to 7 because 4 goes into 28 7 times, but your remainder is 1. So what that means then is that I've got a group of 4, group of 4, group of 4, so on and so on, 7 times. And then I'm back at the first spot again. So this is also equal to i. So if you can figure out how far past a multiple of 4 this is, then you should be able to figure out what it equates to in this basic form down here. So if I look at 47, i to the 47th, if I try to take 47 divided by 4, that's 44, I think, that goes in there. So I got 11, remainder 3. So 1, 2, 3. So equivalent would be i cubed, which is negative i. Okay, so you should be able to do that. Now, getting into complex numbers, if we're adding, we add the real parts with the real parts and the imaginary parts with the imaginary parts. So these two go together and these two go together. So this would be negative 4 plus 8i. So that's adding, like adding like terms. If we want to multiply, however, then we put the real times the real and the imaginary times the imaginary and see what we get out. So the real times the real would give me negative 6, and then this would be i squared. Go to over here and see what i squared is again. So it's a negative 1, so negative 6 times negative 1 is just 6. Uh, if we distribute this one, number 5, I'm sorry if I'm going fast, but this is quick review. So we get 8 and then minus 12i. This one, number 6, if I distribute here, I can take the 2 times the 4, which is 8i. And then if I do this one, well, I'm going to start off with a negative, but then it's 4 times 3, which is my 12, and then I get i squared. But what is i squared again? It's negative 1. So this would be 8i plus 12. Negative, negative makes positive. And if I want to put this in complex form, I'd call it 12 plus 8i. Uh, if we multiply this, this is a binomial times binomial in some respects. So we use FOIL. So first times the first. This would be 6. Then the outsides would be plus 8i and then minus 9i. And then here, I'm going to get minus 12i squared, which we just saw. So what we should do is convert this over to plus 12i. I'm, so, I'm sorry, plus 12. 
So this would be plus 12, and then I get plus 8i minus 9i. So all in, 18, and then that would be minus i. My last example, maybe we want to pause this, pause this and try to do this. But what happens when we take 2 plus 3i and multiply by 2 minus 3i? Well, if I do this, I get 4. I'm doing FOIL. And then this would be minus 6i. And then plus 6i. Oh, look at that. And then this one would be minus 9i squared. These two middle terms will drop out. And this one becomes 4 plus 9. And 4 plus 9 is 13. So if I want to generalize this case, well, what happened? Well, the two middle terms dropped out. I ended up with the first term squared, and I ended up with the last term squared, and it was minus both of those. But when I do minus an i squared, it becomes positive. So let me put this in general form. If I multiply a plus bi and a minus bi, what's going to happen is that I'm going to get the first term squared. Remember, the middle terms will drop out. And it's going to be minus bi squared. What's that? Correct. Plus b squared. And what are these two types of terms called? Well, they are called complex conjugate pairs. So if I have a plus bi and a minus bi, these are called complex conjugate pairs. They will go together uh, when you're finding roots of polynomials. They will always travel together. They will be partners. So if you find one, the other one will always go along with that. So look for that when you do your polynomial uh, roots. All right. So uh, this was a very, very quick review. I hope that you got something out of it. And have a great day.